And before I tell you the drop on the shoe, just want to let you know, I'm this close to hitting register for my next marathon. I'm yesterday to make sure, to make sure yeah and, and bottom you know Ooh, nice there they are there they are oh a black box no, no that's more that no more orange that's not yeah. for is that for all their shoes all the Just this one. Shh, crazy all right you open those up there boom seven and a half that's right. supposedly exactly. all right let's see here oh yeah nice man cool very cool. Insane. All right, Travis helping me out. Thank you, thank you, sir. This is pretty exciting. I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. They're here and uh, looking fly, looking fly. Black box now for the Nike Next Percent. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. All right, first impressions, downtown Denver. Let's rock and roll. And here we are. All right, lacing up. The Nike Next Percents. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. They are here. And what I saw in the shoe store at Runner's Roost is uh, this heel counter is jumping out at me immediately. So we will talk about that later in the shooty. All right, here we go. So, so far, so good lacing up right now, but a very different, unique eyelet chain on the shoe. It, for, it goes off to the side and it always takes me, especially with, it, with a racing shoe, it always takes me two, three, four times of lacing to really nail it. You know how you, just to figure out how that lockdown is gonna work with, uh, with your foot. So that's what, it's just gonna take time, take time. All right, we are basically ready. All right, here's what's gonna happen. My first impressions, first steps in the Nike Next Percent. I've, they're, they're the first time on my feet, so I'm gonna go run and I'm just gonna give you my gut reaction, all right? Let's go. First steps in the Nike Next Percent, gut reaction. We're rolling. Oh man, they're cushy. The heel, I'm feeling something in the heel. A nice little pop there in the heel. So the upper has changed quite a bit from the Vaporfly 4%. Oh yeah, nice and breathable. Oh yeah. I'm not saying I laced it up perfect, but all right, there you go, folks. That's just my initial gut reaction. Let's roll. <laughs> Nike Next Percent first impression run in the books in downtown Denver. 
Zesty, zesty. That's all I'm gonna say right now. We're looking good. All right, see you at the studio. And here we go. First impressions of the Nike Next Percent. I finally got my hands on these shoes. It's crazy. We've been anticipating this shoe since the Vaporfly 4% Fly Knit came out in 2018. And yes, I'm gonna do my best not to turn this into a comparison video. That'll happen maybe in like two weeks from now. We'll see. I just need more time in the Next Percent before going down that road. Also, I don't, I haven't watched, I promise, I haven't watched any other YouTubers out there who are reviewing this shoe right now. I never wanna watch other people before giving my own opinion. Just wanna put that out there. And lastly, before we dive in, welcome to all the new folks. If you are new and you have never been on this channel and you found this channel because of this shoe, I'd invite you to hit the subscribe button down below. I don't often say that, but we have a lot of fun here. We do a lot of crazy things here in the studio. Uh, we do running shoe giveaways daily vlogs, mountain running, running shoe reviews, uh, race reports like epic shots from big races across the country. So anyway, if you're new and you found us, definitely hit the subscribe button uh, if you found us because of this Nike Next Percent. All right, sound good? And before I tell you the drop on the shoe, just wanna let you know, I'm this close to hitting register for my next marathon. I'm, I've been doing a lot of research, trying to figure out what the game plan is gonna be for the fall marathon and on this close. So I'll keep you update on that, updated on that. And we're in the hunt now. Will the next percent be my marathon racing shoe? We shall see. Okay, we, I just need a little more time in this. You know what I mean? Okay, here we go. Eight millimeter drop from heel to toe. So they dropped it down two millimeters from the 4%, all right? And frankly, I love 10 millimeters for a racing shoe. So that's an interesting decision. I'd, I'd love to be a fly on the wall when the Nike you know, running shoe and racing shoe engineers were deciding, okay, let's drop the drop down or drop the offset down by two millimeters. Anyway, I'd love to hear their thoughts and opinions on why they chose to do that. And as far as the weight goes, this is gonna be really my only comparison. I cannot resist to compare the weight between the 4% fly knit and the next percent. Okay, so for the 4%, we're looking at 6.07 ounces or 172 grams in my size. And then in the next percent, we're looking at 5.93 ounces or 168 grams. So they did it, they pulled it off. Any new iteration of a running shoe, you always wanna drop in weight. And that's not a significant drop by any means, but it is a drop and that's a good thing. In fact, I'm a little shocked that they were able to pull it off. Why? Uh, okay, I'm gonna save the midsole for here in a minute. And with this upper, Nike is rolling out a brand new material called the Vapor Weave. And it's very lightweight, very malleable. In fact, when I was lacing up today, I just was thinking, huh, I'm a little confused as to why it's scrunching up so much through the toe box and at the, at the bottom of the eyelet chain, but it, it didn't end up bothering me. But anyway, just so you know, it's very malleable and it's designed not to absorb any water, okay? Um, so we shall see. Uh, you know, I, like for example, when you're at an aid station and people are maybe giving you water or you're dumping water on your head and of course you're sweating and everything else, like you don't want your feet to get too wet. So the idea with this upper is that it won't absorb because guess what? That adds weight to the shoe when it's absorbing water. So we shall see. I haven't, you know, I don't know if I'll be able to put it through a, a wet uh, training test, but that's pretty neat that they put so much uh, into thinking about, let's make sure this, this upper does not absorb any water. And moving on to that midsole. Okay, so this is crazy, everybody. So they added, they added 15% more Zumax foam into this midsole. How did they pull that off and reduce the weight? It's probably the upper, but that's incredible. All right, so the Zumax foam here, heel to toe, and of course the carbon fiber plate is inside there. And um, okay, I'll give you my opinion on how it felt on the ride today here in a minute, but that's, that's the midsole, Nike Zumax foam. And moving on to the outsole, so the bottom of the shoe, they added a lot more traction to the bottom, okay? A lot more grooves, I would say. Really from heel to toe all the way, you can see the grooves there on your screen. And this, uh, this rubber under the forefoot, it did feel a little stiff, a little hard on the landing today. Just putting it out there. Uh, but the idea with this traction and these grooves is just to help 
uh, in marathon races. Remember the Tokyo Marathon this year is a pretty wet year. Boston can sometimes be, be, be pretty bad as far as uh, rainy conditions. So anyway, um, any, yeah, I don't know if people were, com you know, not complaining, but pointing out to Nike in 2018 that they were slipping around a little bit too much in the 4%. So a lot of grooves here on the outsole. And for the fit of the Nike Next Percent, I went true to size for me, and I think we're, we're good. It's a, maybe a smidge too big in the toe box, but I'd rather have just a little too big than a little too small, especially for a marathon race. So uh, that's heel to toe. And I didn't feel like the, the, the midfoot was too narrow. So uh, yeah, sometimes Nikes can feel a little narrow through the midfoot. Didn't think about that at all on today's run. And let's talk about the comfort of the Nike Next Percent. So when I pulled it out of the box today, I was baffled and slightly shocked to see this pad here at the back of the heel counter. I wasn't expecting that at all. And I must say it felt really, really nice at the back here in the heel counter with this little pad. You can't quite see it there, but um, it's this black pad and that was nice. It, it protected the Achilles tendon nice and I wasn't expecting that at all when I pulled it out of the box. Um, okay, one little situation is the bottom of the eyelet chain, the tongue, it was a little bit of a chore to get the tongue to lay flat on the top of my foot today. Uh, and especially toward the bottom. So if I was getting ready for my peak marathon race, I would spend at least five minutes per shoe making sure, like as I was lacing up in my hotel room or whatever, making sure that the tongue was laying completely flat. I just struggled a little bit to get it to lay flat, especially here at the bottom of the eyelet chain. Not a deal breaker, but just keep that in mind as you're lacing up. And on to one positive and one negative. All right, you ready for this? The shoe is feeling fast. It really is. And that's my positive. It just, it feels fast. But here's my negative. It's feeling clunky and more so than I expected. And I don't like it. And now I need more time, give me more time, but it just felt a little clunky. Now the volume, is that the right, or the mass of the shoe has increased while the weight has decreased, I think because of this upper. But again, they added 15% more ZoomX foam through this midsole. And on the run today, and who knows, maybe it's my gait cycle, maybe it's my foot strike, but the shoe felt really clunky between 6.30, minute, 630 per mile and seven minutes per mile. And then I dropped the pace down to 550 per mile and it started to feel better, okay? And now my goal pace for a marathon is about 520 per mile. And I'm hoping the faster I go in the next percent, it'll, it'll continue to feel better and better. But I just wanna say right now, they kind of feel like boats on the bottom of my feet. I'm not gonna say clown shoes, but it's, it's a drawback. I, 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 I just wanna be, I'm just being very transparent and honest and open with you. I was not excited, I was not as, as excited um, as when I was picking, picking them up from the running shoe store. Like I expected a little bit more of a smooth ride and listen, hear me out, hear me out. Maybe I need to put 10 to 15 miles into the shoe in order to loosen up the midsole because it did feel just a little stiff, uh, not rigid, just a little stiff and not soft, not quite a soft landing. So anyway, just being open with you, felt a little clunky today, especially at slower speeds, all right? All right, that's all right, I'm gonna leave it there as far as the drawback. Keyword is gonna be next, and the question of the day. Oh, I've been thinking about this all day, but I, we could talk just about this shoe, but with the 4%, with the Carbon X, with the, um, oh my goodness, I know I'm leaving them out, but now with the next percent, what, what's the forecast for carbon fiber plate marathon racing shoes in the next 12 months, or next six to 12 months, all right? What's your predictions? Where are you at? How do you feel about this next percent? Uh, do you have opinions? And your opinion is just invaluable for the discussion that goes on about these shoes and so many other carbon fiber plate running shoes that are already on the market and are about to enter the marketplace very, very soon. All right, so thank you for being here. Again, if you're new, if you, if you like the, today's content, the style that I like to film in, definitely hit the subscribe button. We do this every single day at 5 a.m. All right, all right, seek beauty, work hard, love each other. See you tomorrow. Ooh, what a day, what a day.